is uh, Lisa here or The Diamond Stitcher as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope you're having a wonderful one. If you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I'm happy you found me and I hope you would consider subscribing and stick around for all things diamond painting. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your continued support really does mean a lot to me that you guys are here, that you watch my content, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share comments down below, and share the videos with those you think may take some value out of it. I have been meaning to film this video for a very long time and I've, I've just, it's just gotten away from me. This is a diamond painting that I finished back in January. This is a Diamond Art Club diamond painting. The title was Masked. I can't remember the artist and I've covered up the um, print on the canvas border so I can't see it. It was one of the exclusive kits for their, I believe it was the Christmas 2023 mystery diamond painting box that I got. You can't purchase it anymore. It's been archived and yeah, I have been keeping this one rolled up. I did finish the border uh, probably back in January. What I do to finish my diamond paintings, as you can see, I've painted it black and I use a glossy type paint. I think it just gives it a nice kind of uh, more um, fancy look than a matte type paint. This is actually the paint I use and I know people always tell me, you know, you probably could use the regular acrylic paint, but you guys, this one works, so I'm not changing it. This is a ready to pour acrylic, so it is actually a bit thinner than typical acrylic paint because it's actually used for pouring um, kind of acrylic paint. I don't know what those paintings are called where you pour, pour it and, and move it around and it makes pretty pictures, but um, it's jet black and it has a bit of a gloss finish. It was on sale, I think, when I was looking for some paint and I just grabbed this one and it's been working, so I'm not changing it. I got it from Michaels. You can also find it on Amazon. I use a simple foam brush, a smaller one, to paint my borders. Now, I've already done it in this video. I do have another video, which I will try to remember to link down below, where I do show you how I paint my borders. Now, that video was filmed a little while ago, but I haven't really changed my technique. What I do is I actually pour a bit of this paint on a Ziploc bag and I use my foam brush, I dip it in the paint, and what I do first is I start usually at, at one of the edges, and I line up the edge of the foam brush here with the diamonds. I don't put tape on the diamonds, I don't cover the diamonds, I'm just very careful. And what I do is I put it right up against the diamonds and I very slowly pull it down here all the way to the bottom all the way to the end here. And then I go back a second time, usually using it like this, so the flat way, and I pull it down to paint the rest of it. And I do this on all four sides. I let it dry for probably about 10 minutes, and then I put another coat on. So I always do two coats, because there are, uh, when you just do one, there are spots where you do see some white come through, so um, I do it in two coats. I don't seal my diamond paintings anymore. Um, when I was new, I did, just, just because, but Diamond Art Club paintings really don't need to be sealed. Their glue is really good. Now, I am noticing a lot of pet hair in between these guys. These, this is a round diamond painting, so truth be told, I probably would have benefited from sealing this, but I'm actually not planning on hanging this up anywhere permanently, so uh, I didn't bother. That's just another step, and... Um, I'm not worried about the diamonds falling off. The only issue is the pet hair. I have a dog and a cat that is stuck between the diamonds, but I, I really, I don't care. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. And then what I do is I have this, and I did this before sitting down here because it's I can't do it on this table that I'm on. I have to use a kitchen counter. But what I do is I cut the borders down. Now, the printing on the white canvas, I don't take it off with acetone or anything. If you do want to remove it, you can use acetone. I believe nail polish remover to remove it. I don't bother because I paint all of my borders black, so it doesn't matter. Two coats covers it nicely. And then what I do is I get my craft uh, ruler I just picked this up at Michael's back when I was sewing. And I have an X-Acto knife and I make sure, now this is looking kind of funny because it's hard to break these things off, but I make sure that I've cracked it if it's, if it's been used quite a bit so it's nice and fresh, so it's nice and sharp. And what I do for my borders, I actually usually use, and it's going to be hard to see on here, 
because it's going to focus on the diamond painting. Am I going to? Yeah, it's not going to focus, but I, I, I pick a line on the ruler and I stick to that edge. So what I do is I line it up to the edge of the diamonds. Now you can see, right? It's right to the edge, right? But usually the Diamond Art Club border comes out to about here. And then I take my X-Acto and I just cut a straight line and it would be against the ruler. So I use the, the ruler as a guide and I just cut a straight line all the way down and I move it down and do, do the other half. And I do that around the whole painting. Sometimes halfway through, I need to crack off the X-Acto and get a fresh part. It's just so that it's, it's a lot easier to cut it with a sharp new blade than it is a dull one. So uh, to make my life easier, that is what I do. But yeah, that is how I do it. I don't uh, mark my canvas anymore. I used to mark it with Sharpie and then go down and cut it, but I don't. I just usually use my husband's help or if I'm having a good day, I can do it myself, but um, with a sharp blade, I should say. And yeah, that's, that's what I do. So this is how I usually finish my canvases. And then I hang them up in the bathroom. I have a curtain rod set up. I will post a picture of what I have hanging currently in the bathroom, which is a recent finish a rainy day by Hannah Lynn. I finished her off the exact same way and she's hanging up now. She'll be up until I finish my next one, or I might even leave her up a little bit longer because she's a bit special. I did a lot of enhancements on that one and I do have a video on all of that. Um, you can find in my uh, post review section of my YouTube channel. But what I want to do with this painting is show you guys how to use a magnetic frame. This has come up a few times and uh, I've had this sitting here waiting to film a video. I just really, I forgot for a while and then I just didn't have time or the health to do so. But here I am today. So magnetic frames, you can get these on Amazon. That's where I buy mine. I buy them in black. They have a plain wood color. You could paint them whatever color you want. I'm simple. I just like black. And if I'm gonna hang anything up, my husband prefers just black as well. No, no funky colors in this house. But um, yeah, what I do is I take a measuring tape and I will measure the uh, canvas that I want to frame using the magnetic frames. Typically I will measure out, and I'm zoomed out as far as I can, but typically what I do is I like to leave a little bit overhanging. Now this one, I can't remember what I bought these for. I don't think I bought it for this painting, but it is hanging off, if you can see on the far left, a little bit. So I like a little bit, maybe that's about a centimeter hanging off. I just like it better. Some people like it to be perfectly um, in line with the edge. So if that's you, you would want to uh, measure it properly like that. And then I'll show you the other side. So if I had it lined up with that side, um, completely straight. This side is hanging off, you can see. So what I do is I kind of eyeball it and I make, make it even on both sides. That way it looks symmetrical. Now these magnetic frames, they, they usually come in a tube, at least the ones I've bought and they come like this. This one is actually a pretty nice one. I will try to remember to link it down below. It does have this paper that you can take off. It's like a glue, gluey substance. You can take it off. I don't know if it's meant to come off or not. Either way, it works because you are using magnets, right? But um, it has that covering there. It does secure those magnets in place. This one you can see is just a flat piece of wood. This one comes with a string. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see this string here. Now, what I like to do is put this part on the back of my painting because down here, let me pull it this way, you see this little knot? So I prefer that on the back side of my painting. So this is the one that's going to face down. Now, with Diamond Art Club paintings, lots of them are big and they're gonna be heavy once the diamonds are down on them. So what I like to do is secure my canvas to this back piece, the piece that has the string on it. And that's the only part that I secure to it. The rest, I just let the magnets do their job. Uh, this way, when I hang it up on the hook, I don't have to worry about this diamond painting sliding down at all. Now, this one is not that big and it's not that heavy, so I might get away with just using the magnets, but I wanted to show you what I do to secure them. There's a few different things you can do. You can use craft glue, so E6000 or Gorilla Glue. I have in the past done Gorilla Glue. It works, it's just very messy. You can also use Velcro strips. So some people will um, 
cut thin Velcro strips to put it on here and then put the other part of the Velcro on the back of the canvas and then you can secure it that way. That is nice if you want to reuse these magnetic frames, if you want to perhaps rotate paintings. Uh, the Velcro would allow you to do that. Uh, the glue would not. Once you have that Gorilla Glue on, it's going to be stuck for life. What I actually prefer to do is use a staple gun. I purchased a small-ish staple gun from Amazon and it came with its own staples of a few different varieties. I choose the staple that is the shortest in, in uh, height because the problem is sometimes if your staples are too long, they can actually puncture through the back of this. Now it doesn't really matter if that happens because this is going to be facing our wall. So um, if it does happen, at least it's not you know, on the front side and, and it's going to ruin the frame. But I think I've set it properly. We will see, um, fingers crossed it works. It might come out a little bit, but again, I'm not worried because this is going on the back of my canvas. And personally, with the Gorilla Glue, you have to let it dry. It takes a while to dry and you have to put heavy objects on top of this and it was just a mess. My husband's books, I laid on top of it and he was worried that I was going to ruin them. So um, yeah, I elected to try a staple gun for the next one. I have used it before and I'm going to use it again here, but it may actually, um, create a very loud noise when I do, you know, activate the staple gun. So I may mute the video while I'm doing it, but I am going to um, put probably three staples in. And that's just so that it hangs uh, without too much sagging in the middle. I could just do a staple on either end, but I'm also gonna do one in the middle. And you wanna make sure you're not stapling over the magnet. So in between the magnets is where you want to aim. Now I'm gonna do the right one first. And just bear with me because my table is, you know, small. I don't have a lot of space like some people. And I do have a bit of a dip in my table. Now I want to be careful and try and make sure that my, it would really help if I had a second set of hands, but my husband is working today and I find it's easier to film when he's working because he is just so noisy and inevitably he gets up and decides to do something as soon as I start filming and makes a racket. So I have it lined up where I think it's going to work. Sorry that I'm not in the middle of the frame, but I think you can see okay. And I wanna make sure there's no magnet there. So I'm gonna put my first staple there. Now it might be loud, so I may elect to uh, mute this part, but what I'm going to do, my staple is gonna come out here. I've already loaded it with staples and I'm gonna aim it kind of right in that light wood area, right in the middle, so between the two black. Now, the one thing with the staple uh, gun is this little knobby on this one. Now, they all could be different, right? But this little knobby controls the depth. And as you can see, this staple is going to stick out a little bit. What I'm actually going to do, let me see if I can get that in frame. Where are we? Can you focus? Focus, there we go. See that staple is just hanging up a little bit. I'm gonna grab my hammer and I'm just gonna hammer in a little bit more. This is a cute little hammer that we keep in the junk drawer. Well, not really the junk drawer, the handy drawer. Um, I got it from, or my husband got it from Chapters. I, um, I don't know if you have Chapters in the States, but it's just a handheld little hammer. It actually is like a utility knife. It comes with all sorts of different little tools. But what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to mute this because it's going to be loud. And I'm just gonna hammer this in a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna take it off camera because this table is very, very echoey and I don't wanna scare my animals, so hold on. Okay, we are hammered in. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Kind of, it is flat. So nice and flat, and you want it flat because you want the other uh, magnetic bar to attach uh, with the magnets and, and not have anything in the way. Now I'm going to do probably the other end first. So let me just move my stuff, try to keep it in frame. 
So I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up pretty evenly here. I'm gonna double check that there's no magnet right here where I'm gonna put my staple. Now the stapler does make a loud noise, so I'm going to mute it again, but I'm gonna line it up kind of in the middle. I am going to, before I hammer that last one in, I'm gonna come here. So I'm gonna double check before I do anything where that center magnet is, cause I don't wanna put the staple there. So I'm gonna just put it off to the uh, right here. I just put my finger so I know where not to go. And I'm just putting a staple in the middle because I want um, it to hang evenly and I don't want the center to sag a little bit. Okay, you guys, I am gonna take this over and hammer those last ones in. The one thing about living in a one bedroom apartment is you don't have a tool table or a, <laughs> to a workshop or anything like that. I don't even have a craft room, you guys. We uh, make it work in the living room. But what I've done is I've put three staples in, one on the left, one in the center, one on the right, and I have, um, used a, a hammer just to flatten them out a little bit more. Now I could play with this depth thing, but I really don't want to do that today. Um, the other thing is, look on the back. Let me see if I can get, yeah, you can see it. See, the staple did come through a little bit. It's no biggie because this is going to face the wall. Nobody is going to see it. So for me, it is just fine. And it's actually not that much. If you were worried about this scratching your wall, you could put like a what are those called? The felt pads that you put on furniture, on wood floor. You could put something like that back there, but you really don't need it. It is not sharp at all. Now what I'm going to do is grab this second piece. So this is the piece that goes on the front and we're gonna see if it sticks. Just like that. So magnets attached, even with those staples in there, it's not affecting uh, them because it's not very deep, right? If it was very deep, then these magnets might not attach, but they attach quite well. You can see that it's barely moving. You can kind of shimmy it off there, but it does attach. Now, when you go to hang it up, you're gonna hang it up with this string. And because the canvas is attached to the um, back part of this, you're not gonna have, it's not gonna slide off at all. You don't need to put staples in this side one, it's gonna be impossible. You would have to glue this side if you really wanted to, but you don't need to because the only thing that needs securing is the diamond painting on the back of this frame that has the string. This one will attach with the magnets. It's not gonna fall off at all, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, I'm gonna come down to the bottom and show you the bottom. And then what I will do is I will hang this up and so you can see it hanging. And um, yeah, I'll insert that picture at the end. But first we wanna add this on the bottom. So here is the magnetic frame parts that are going to go on the bottom. There are no strings on here cause you're not gonna hang the bottom, right? There are just two black uh, pieces of wood with the magnets inside. So you're just gonna line them up. You have the one on the back side, one on this side, do a little bit of a shimmy so they look even. And this one is going to attach with the magnets and you just wiggle it around. You can kind of see if you're looking here, this is, uh, you can see some black border here and not a lot over here. So I am just going to probably pull it down a bit. And maybe pull this, it's harder to pull it up because I don't have any canvas to uh, hold on to. And there we go. So let me just pull it over so you can see here. I really like it when there is a little bit of overhang of this frame. Again, that is just preference. Some people like it, you know, right up to the side. I prefer it with a little bit of an overhang. And then let me just show you this side and this side is the same. So the bottom ones you do not need to screw, uh, screw on. <laughs> the bottom ones you do not need to secure. They're fine just hanging on by the magnets. It is just the one that has the string that you're gonna be hanging on the wall that you want to secure a diamond painting to. Now, if you had a very small snack size kit and you were gonna do this, you uh, might not need to secure it. Again, it's only to uh, help heavier diamond paintings from falling off over time. Gravity can just pull it down. So that's what I do. The other reason I like these, um, using the staple, 
staple gun is I can also remove these. So if I wanted to put this magnetic frame on a different painting, all I have to do is use my staple remover and pop these out and they actually pop out pretty easily. I'm not gonna do it because I wanna keep these in here, but it's very easy. You just pop in your staple remover. My staple remover came with my staple gun. So if you, if you are gonna be buying one, look for one that has both, it's pretty handy. And then yeah, you just pop the staples out. You don't really need to put more staples here. I mean, you can if you want to, but personally I find once you have the front piece on, it holds the rest of that painting really nicely. It's not going to sag at all. So that is how I do magnetic frames. Now, again, let me grab my measuring tape actually and show you how to kind of measure and how to look it up on Amazon. Okay, so when you want to measure, always measure your canvas when you're going to do framing, whether you're using magnetic frames or another type of framing, always get your measuring tape out and measure. The dimensions on your diamond painting typically are just for the drill field, so it doesn't take into account any of this border. So if you are gonna leave a bit of a border and paint it, then, or with washi tape, right? Um, you're gonna need to measure it, otherwise you're gonna order something that doesn't fit. Most things are in inches. So what I do is I take my measuring tape and I guess. So I'm gonna just put it on this side. So we're at 23.5. Now, because I like a little bit of overhang, what I did was I looked up a 24 inch um, magnetic frame. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. But if you like even more of an overhang than I have, then you would just eyeball, eyeball how um, big you want it. Now you have to take into account that if you order a 24, you're only gonna have five millimeters on each side, right? Because we're just, I have it um, completely lined up with the edge here. You could pull it by five millimeters, then you would uh, have a little bit more accurate, but as long as you are aware, then uh, it should be okay. So 23.5 is the actual dimensions of my finished diamond painting that has been painted and cut. I want bigger, so I'm gonna go 24. 25 to me is just a little bit too big. I don't like that much of an overhang, so 24 is what we're going with. And I am going to bring up Amazon here. I see a delivery truck outside, but I don't think it's for me. Let's see here. So what I type in, I was looking up Diamond Art Club on here. <laughs> Somebody said Diamond Art Club um, paintings, some of their paintings are available on Amazon.com. .ca, you guys, it's a tongue twister. Some of Diamond Art Club's Amazon exclusive kits are now available on Amazon.ca. Um, so I was looking at that. Let me see here, what am I doing? I'm searching for magnetic frames. So I'm gonna put 24 inch, cause that's what I want. And I'm gonna type magnetic frame. Now we're gonna have a bunch pop pop. This one is actually the one that I actually used and it was only $11.99, so it's pretty cheap. You can find cheap ones. They do have, as you can see, actually let me zoom in here. So you can see black, teak, walnut, white. So you do have uh, some options. I just always get the black one. And then this listing does have different sizes. So by inch. Now you do not need to measure the length of your painting when you're doing magnetic frames. You just need the width. So we are going to scroll back here and see if they have a 24 and they do. So they have a 24 or 27. 27 would definitely be too big. So I'm going to go with the 24. This one was $29.99. I think I got it on sale though and add to your cart and purchase it. So this is the one that I got. It is, where is it? I will have a link down below, but that is the brand. I have bought a few magnetic frames from this shop on Amazon and I really like them. They look nice quality. You can also scroll through different listings. Now I'm gonna show you this one cause it might confuse you a little bit. In the listing itself, like up here, you can see it says 24 by 36, 24 by 18, 17 by 24. That gets confusing. Click on the listing, go down here, choose your color, and then you'll see here, it's going to tell you 24 inch. So that's the one I want. If you do scroll down, it's gonna say again, the product dimensions there is going to confuse you a little bit, but as long as your listing is for 24 inches, then it should fit this diamond painting. Always remember to measure your diamond painting before you buy magnetic frames. Um, if you want a little bit of a overhang, you're gonna have to take that into account. If you want it right edge to edge, then you're gonna want to 
finish the diamond painting completely, cut your edges and then measure it. That's always how I do it, just in case. I always prefer finishing it first. I have, when I was new, I did buy a frame that was a bit too big because I miscalculated it before I cut it. So I always recommend just completely finishing your canvas, painting it, cutting it down, and then measure for your magnetic frame. Now I am going to hang this up somewhere and take a photo and insert it in here so that you can see how it is hanging up. Less messy than glue. The glue is very messy and it takes longer to dry and you gotta put heavy things on top of it. Velcro is a good option. I've not tried that. I might try that with my next one, but um, the staple gun just seemed like the easiest for me. You do get sometimes it coming through here, but if you um, fiddle with your staple gun and practice on something, if you have another piece of wood that you can practice on, um, just to get the depth right, then uh, you won't have it coming through there. But again, it really doesn't bother me. It's going against the wall. I don't care. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Have you used magnetic frames and how do you do it? Do you use glue? Do you use, actually you could also use double-sided tape. I should mention that. You could do that, but it would have to be pretty strong tape. I still think the Velcro, I think the staple is gonna be the best or glue. Velcro may be third runner up, but uh, let me know what you guys have done and what you've tried and what has worked for you. This is a very simple, easy way to frame your diamond paintings. I think they look good. I love the glossy effect of the acrylic paint I use. And then these frames are actually, I think, pretty good quality. If you're gonna be hanging this up somewhere, it looks like it is professionally done. You'll see it when I post the picture up, but I'm very happy with it and I don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. Just a bit of acrylic paint, a foam brush, a staple gun. But again, the staple gun is going to, uh, you're gonna have it forever and the magnetic frame. So if you, if you get them on sale, even better. I will try and link some of this stuff down below if I can. Magnetic frame for sure, I'll link below and I'll try to do the USA and Canada Amazon for you guys. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. That really does help a channel grow. If you've made it to the end and you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Just click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified when I do post new videos. And until next time, happy diamond painting, you guys. Bye.